So we've reached the end of January 2022, the last Tech Talk of the month. And today we're gonna to take a look at how we can use some spreadsheets and create charts. But rather than just making charts with data that's sitting there doing nothing, we're going to create these charts that look at data that might be changing. Whether it's changing because data is coming in from say a form, or if it's changing because it's coming from uh, formulas and things that you're adapting via some drop-down lists and things. So let's take a look at how that's going to work with a sheet I've put together here, and I'm going to share that link on our doc with all of our Tech Talk stuff so that you can go through these instructions and go through all of this yourself as well. So I've added these little blurbs, these little image boxes, basically with some text and instructions, so you won't necessarily have to be watching the video as you go through all of this. So let's take a look at the first one here, keeping it really simple. What I'm going to do is quickly answer these two questions. How many kids live in Lindsay and how many kids live in Huntsville? So I've got a column here full of the cities for all of this fake data that I've created. And basically I just want to be able to count them. But since the theme of the day is charts, I'm going to use a chart to do that. So I've selected column H here. I just clicked on H, I get the entire column. I'm not specifying where the top and bottom of this happens to be because it doesn't matter. I'm going to come over to the charts button that I have up in my toolbar here right near the end and click chart. And when I click on that insert chart button, it immediately looks at what I've already selected, of course, and it's going to grab that data and make a chart out of it. So from here, first thing I can do is look at my chart editor options over on the side here. We've got some basic setup stuff. I'm going to leave it at pie chart right now. I like the pie chart, but instead I'm going to come to customize. I'm going to look at what my options are here for my actual pie chart. Let's see, donut hole, slice label. That's what I'm looking for. I want to label each of these slices because when I look at it right now, I see which cities we're speaking about here on the pie chart and there's some percentages, but that's not helping me with my count question that I was asked to answer. So I'm going to click on the slice label option here and I want to go with the value. Since I'm already seeing percentages anyway, it doesn't help me. And there we go. Now I've got the actual numbers sitting right there on my chart and I can see that Lindsay has 43 and Halliburton has 29. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the side panel here with my chart editor. Just show you the other way you could do this. When I've got any chart up here and I don't have the editor open, all I actually need to do is hover on each of these different slices. So I could have done that too. I didn't need to turn on the labels if I just wanted to manually check these you know, on my own one real quick. But if I plan to, you know, print this or save this, or add this as an image to some slideshow or something, then of course adding those labels is going to be more important. So you've got the option depending on what it is you actually need to be doing. In that vein, what I can show you here is I click these dots, and it does give me a download option. So this is what I mean. If I need to grab that as an actual image file, I could download it, this chart as an image and then drop that into, like I say, slides or a document or email it, whatever I want to do. And those numbers will be sitting right there. So that's the first one. And again, you can just follow the instructions that are right there on that box. And that's going to help you go through that. So let me just make this a little bit smaller here, get out of our way for right now. And I'm going to go to the next tab here. So the next tab I've labeled awards and I've just grabbed the same names and awards that were on the previous sheet. If I come back to my fake data, you can see I've got column K actually has awards in it. So I could do everything I'm about to do here and reference this main list. I didn't need to copy and paste this data and normally I probably wouldn't. Um, I would just reference that other sheet. But we're gonna look at that in our next task. Right now we're gonna keep it simple and use something called the unique function. And what the unique function will do is look at a list of data like here with our awards and just spit back a unique list. So one item that it sees in that list and it won't repeat any of them. So where I can in this list see math multiple times, and dance multiple times, the unique function is going to do a, sort of a filter for me basically, filter just down to one instance each. So as it suggests, I'm gonna click into D1, hit the equal sign and type unique. Now, whenever I start typing any function or formula, of course, it drops down this little box here that's letting me know what this formula is called, what it kind of does. And then if I hit on that and use the little arrow here, it's going to show me not only how to construct this function, like what it needs, what, what elements need to be in this particular function, but it's also going to give me a bit more of a description. It's going to give me a bit more of a, an example. And then if I were to come down and click on learn more, and this is true of every function that you might use here, you can click learn more and get another side panel opening here 
that will give you more descriptions and more examples of how this function actually works. But for right now, I've got my instructions here I can follow and it's letting me know, hey, I want to go from column B basically is what it's doing here. So I'll show you how I did that. I click into here. I didn't actually type B. I rarely ever type these um, cell references. Instead, I just clicked on column B. Now, that is grabbing everything, including the word award, which I really don't care for. So if I click into the function or into the formula bar here, I can use my cursor and go over and say, you know what? I don't want this to be the entire column B. I want you to start at B2. So I can type in B2 colon B, and it will just go from there all the way down and cover everything that I'm looking for. So that works. I don't really need to do anything else. I'll close the bracket and hit enter. And now I get this unique list right here, one instance per item that it found on that particular column. So next to it, now I want to count these. So I'm going to use not just count, but something called count if. So it allows me to count elements uh, in the spreadsheet based on a condition, based on my if statement. So I'm going to say equals count if. Open up that bracket again. And this time I want everything in column B, so I'm going to hit column B, come back into here, and again I'll open up with that little question mark. I'm going to show you the help just so you can see it's suggesting the range. So which cells is it going to look at here? Where, where am I going to do my counting, it says. And of course that's column B. I'm going to hit my comma and it will highlight for me the next piece of the, the function here. Tell me what the next thing that I'm actually doing. So you can always look here to know, okay, where am I in my function? Where's my cursor and what am I about to type? Well, the criteria in this case is that it equals whatever I see right here because I want to have right in the cell, I'm trying to get a count for the word math. So everything in column B, I want you to count it if it matches D1. Very simple. Close the bracket, hit enter. And Cheats is smart enough to realize that I probably want to drag this formula down and do it over and over and over again. So instead of using the little fill handle, dragging that formula down, I can go ahead and just hit this little check mark. Add that in there, and we're good to go. So with that in there that way, I've got all of my numbers now. And since the theme of the day is charts, I'm going to go ahead and select D&E &D and click the chart button. I'm going to select all of that. Actually, it said D&E &E, technically, so I could just go D. E. And that way, if anything changes over here, if we got more awards maybe or something, then I'd be able to see additional stuff um, adding itself to the list right here. So I'm going to do that and then come over to my charts button, hit that real quick. Ta-da. Now I have a chart breaking down exactly how many, um, not exactly, breaking down a, a little pie chart to show me the, the distribution essentially across these different awards. And of course I could change that to different types of bar chart styles if I wanted to. Um, that's in my setup section here where it says chart type. Maybe I don't like pie charts for this one. I wanna go with a bar chart. Get a different sort of visual representation of what I'm looking at here. Now when I say these charts can change based on what's going on, if this data was being fed by my form and I added more and more students or maybe the awards change, then this chart would adapt itself. So since the chart is based on these two columns right here, all I would need to do in that sense is change what I see over here. So if I look at this column here and I say, you know what, maybe I'm gonna give out some more science awards. I'm gonna copy that right now to make this quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and just say paste, 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 let's get ridiculous so it makes sense, paste, paste, there, a lot more science awards, and you can see all those other numbers started going down as I took them away, but now science is my number one bar, so if this data needed to change at all, I don't need to do anything to my chart, it's just going to adapt itself based on whatever it sees there. So, Another simple one. Let's go to the next tab here at the bottom, the track and field chart. So this is now going to pull from the very first tab that we looked at. So our original data here, my original fake data had lots of names. It has some cities that these kids are all coming from. And if I scroll over in column M here, I have the track and field information showing up as well. What different events have they all registered for that they want to go compete in? Well, when I come back to my new tab here, my task is to make this little chart based on 
what events people from different cities have registered for essentially. So let's take a look at how that's going to work. A couple new things I can play with here. First one is data validation. So data validation is just a feature that allows you to specify what data can exist in a particular cell. I can use that to create little drop down lists, which are really handy. So we're going to make a little drop down list here. And then after that, write a little function that references whatever it sees in that cell, which of course I'm going to be able to change. So in A2, I'm going to come up to the data menu and come all the way down to data validation. Well, with data validation, as I suggested, it lets you limit what can go in a cell. So I might have decided, oh, I only want numbers in that cell or I only want dates in that cell. But one of the things I use probably more than absolutely anything is the list from a range. So create a list based on a bunch of cells. If I just move this out of the way for a second to see my tip that I've got back here, it looks like I'm going to go over to my fake data sheet, the one down here that I named fake data, and I want everything from column H. So what you'll see there is little quote marks and an exclamation mark, because that's how you write a sheet reference whenever you're looking in these functions and formulas. You want to reference some data that you see on one of your other tabs here, and you have to name it. So I click into this spot here that says enter a range of formula, and I can click the little uh, grid box that we see here, basically, that lets me then go select the data I want. So I get to click on it. I don't actually have to do any typing here. That's really handy because it means I never misspell or mess up how these sheet names are written. I don't worry about the quotes and the exclamation marks and all that stuff. It's going to do it for me, which is awesome. So I'm going to click here. I get the select data range. Great. Again, I'm not going to type in here. I'm just going to come over to fake data say, you know what, the range I want you to look at is column H, where all those cities are. Done. Again, I'm not specifying the top and bottom of this because I want to, to be flexible enough that if this data is all being entered via a form, if they're registering for these track and field events with a Google form, this column is going to keep getting more and more data in it. So this way, it's going to reference anything that it sees in that entire column. And I'll say OK. And save. Perfect. Let's go back to my track and field chart here for a second. And now I see this little arrow in that cell that I was writing my uh, validation in. When I click it, I'm going to get all the different cities that it sees. So it doesn't repeat them. It's much like that unique function we just used, but it does it automatically, which is awesome. So next it says, all right, write a filter formula. Well, a filter formula is just to show you what that's going to do. I'll come over to my fake data for a second. There's a filter tool in Sheets. This is different than using the actual filter function, although the effect is extremely similar. So what it's going to do, if I were to come up to this top row, basically, where my column headers are, I have a filter button here. So I'll just show you how this works so you get a visual of it first. When I click on that, I get all these little arrows on the column headers here for each of these well, columns of data. If I decided, you know what, show me the city, I want to see just Bracebridge. I can check Bracebridge and say, OK. And now it filtered out all the data. And you can see I've only got Bracebridge now. And that actually <laughs> messed with my chart here, too. Um, but as I look at these row numbers here, I can see they're skipping. I go from row 1 to 6 to 13 to 20. So it's kind of a clue right there, as well as this green filter icon, of course, that there's some data missing. There's some rows that I can't quite see. Um, but for this case, I've got all my Bracebridge kids here now. And maybe I want to see, all right, so over in track and field here, uh, show me all of the Bracebridge kids clear, who signed up for 100 meter run. And I can say OK. And we've got, let's see, five of them. OK, so a bunch of clicking, a bunch of filtering. I'm able to figure that out. Sure, that's what the filtering does on a spreadsheet. It just limits the amount of data that you can see based on one column, two columns, a bunch of different things. You can actually filter on a lot of different stuff. You can filter by color and different conditions or different values, different formulas, all kinds of different filtering options with Sheets. Let me just turn off the filter button. All my data comes back. So I'm not deleting things and copying, pasting things all over the place. It's a pretty easy way to limit and look at your data in just the way that you want. But 
we're going to use now the filter function, which does a similar kind of task. I'm going to come to B2, and I'm going to type equals filter, open bracket, and again, here I'll click my little question mark, there we go, you can see, all right, it wants to know what range am I filtering, and then it's going to want a condition, like, like we said, equal to Bracebridge, or equal to 100 meter run, or something like that, what's the condition? Well, the range right now is going to be over on fake data, column M, so I'm going to go to fake data, while my cursor is still sitting inside that little uh, function line, you can see it sitting there flashing next to the uh, uh, open bracket, and I'm going to go click column M where all my track and field stuff is, because that's the information I'm going to filter, comma, and then it says, all right, I want to see all of these whenever that drop-down list I created is set to a particular city, so I'm going to say whenever column H, where all my cities are, is equal to what I've chosen over here myself. And you can see that in our instructions here. It's going to look at fake data M. Well, now I want to, the condition is fake data H, all of the cities, equal to A2. Well, A2 is where our cities are going to show up here once I use that drop down list. So my function is written. I can close the bracket, hit enter. Nothing. Well, yeah, of course, because look, I haven't done anything yet with the cities. As soon as I choose a city, like Lindsay, I'm going to get a big long list of all the different events that they've done. Well, here in my little instructions, it says, all right, select the column of events and click the chart button. All right, so column of events, boom. Chart button over here. We've used that a few times now. Click that, and I got a chart. So again, I can use this as a pie chart, bar chart, whatever I'm looking for, really. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to bar chart for a second just to do something different and I can see the numbers along the side here so that's that's nice that way but let's go ahead and label it like before just cuz I'm gonna go to customize and let's see where is it on this one each series left axis no not there you can poke around in all these different options here and see what kind of information you actually want uh, chart title where did that values option go? Hmm, position for the legend. You can change all sorts of things. Text color, um, labels. And these labels, of course, are along the bottom here that it's referring to there because I'm on the horizontal axis. Uh, vertical axis I can adjust as well. Let's see, grid lines and ticks. Let's take a peek at that one there. I can adjust all of these grid lines if that's not descriptive enough. I mean, I can see, of course, where the six, so that's obviously a seven. I'm going to be able to hover on these as well. But lots of different ways to sort of represent the data and show what's going on and how you want that all to look. I can even go 3D. Let's go 3D for now. That looks good. All right, so I'm going to close that. And just like with my pie charts, I can come down and just hover on each of these and get the numbers that way as well if I don't like using the grid lines or looking at my legend along the side. So lots of options there, but let's just move him out of the way because the question here was, when I look at this, how many kids from Woodville are registered in the pentathlon? Okay, fair enough. I'm going to move my chart over here and I'm going to choose Woodville. Done. And I asked about the pentathlon. Looks like five of them. So we've got five kids in the pentathlon. And now every time I adjust this little drop down list, I'm going to see different data showing up, different options in that event list. And then my chart just adapts itself as we go. And again, as soon as I get one I want, I can hit that dot and just download this as its own picture file if I needed to, to drop into slides and docs and things like that. Okay, so last one here, we've got one tab left. This is for marks. So this is what a teacher might mess around with if they want to sort of graphically represent some of the marks from different tests and things that they've got. And we've got a few options here from really simple to yeah, a little more complicated. But now that you've seen those other data validation options and filter options, probably not as bad as you might think.
chart one, a single test. So I just want to chart one test here. It says select column A and B and then click that chart button. Well, the reason we're doing A and B is because it's going to use column A as part of its labels. So I just selected those two columns and I'm going to go up and just hit insert chart. And immediately, like I said, there's our labels down at the bottom and there's all of our different test values that we've got in there. So it looks like everybody's over 50%. That's good. Nobody failed. Um, and then we can see how well everybody did on this. So there's chart one. Let me just go ahead and drag him kind of down out of the way for a second. Get over here, chart, move. All right. Chart number two, a single student. Well, similar. Um, I get to decide which student am I interested in here. And all I'm going to do is click on that student name and select all the numbers to the right. So I want to see how that single student did on all of their tests rather than how a particular test went. So I'll go with Emma here, Emma Frost. I'm going to drag across. I've got her plus all of her test scores. And I can say chart. And right there, immediately, I've got a little chart just for Emma. And I can see how she's doing kind of on average with her tests. So if I was going to be, you know, sitting down at a, a teacher meeting or is putting together a, an email or something for the parents and I wanted to let them know how Emma's doing, this is one way to very graphically sort of represent how things are going rather than just, you know, copying and pasting some boring numbers. Charts are always a little more visual and people like information that way. So there's a quick, easy way to just highlight whoever you're interested in and create a chart very quickly. I'm just going to hit delete on that to create a bit of space here and look at our other option here. So this one gets back into that data validation thing. We're going to create another drop down list here. So as it suggested, click into G2, which is right here. And of course, I've already labeled this and set it up for us. And we're going to create a drop down list of all the kids' names. So same as before. I'm going to come up to my data menu, come down to data validation, click into this box for entering a range or formula and hit that little box so it pops out and lets me start clicking whatever I want. So from here, I can come and click on column A to get all those student names. And again, I don't need full name in this, so I'm actually gonna click into here and just say, you know what, start at A2 and say, okay. Save. Test it real quick. What do we see? All our names. Good stuff, that's what I'm hoping for. So now, right next to it here in H2 where the test is, I'm gonna to need to pull whatever test value, whatever student here I've selected is gonna pop up right there. So let's go ahead and pick Benjamin just to start with. He's right there, it's gonna be easy to read and see if everything's working the way I want it to. So I click into here and this time, I, technically a filter could probably work as well, but I'm going to use something that's a little more universal. This V lookup formula is really handy, and this one exists in Excel as well as Sheets. Filter, unfortunately, doesn't exist in Excel, so if we're trying to go back and forth and you do a little bit of other messing around, we talked about that in a previous Tech Talk video. Um, but for today, I'm going to stick on this one to the V lookup formula, which absolutely exists in both systems. V lookup is a vertical lookup, so it's going to vertically look down a list here and allow me to look up a value and then spit back another one. So the idea here is I'm gonna look up a student's name and then depending on how I write my function, it's going to find that name and then give me some other data from the row where it found that name. Let's go look it up. So let's go equals V lookup, open that bracket. Let's hit that question mark, see what it shows us. So it wants to know what's the search key, as in what am I looking up? All right, well, it's going to look up whatever name I chose. So I'm just going to click right there. G2, comma. All right, range. So it's like, all right, where am I going to look this up? What batch of cells should I be checking out? Well, I need to give it the full table, not just the column where the actual name is going to be found. I need to say, here's the whole range, the whole set of data you're going to be looking at, both for finding something, the lookup part, as well as what you're going to give back to me. So I'm going to click from A, in this case, all the way over to E, just so I don't even have to think about it. This is the entire set that I'm going to use for all of these different formulas, because I'm going to have to do this four times. Click here, comma, 
now index. So what index is referring to is saying, all right, of this range, index is the column number. And I mean, you're saying, wait a minute, numbers, all these columns are labeled with letters here. And that's true. But when I set up a, a range like this for a VLOOKUP, it doesn't know if I grabbed column ABC or column HIJ or column, you know, QP, whatever. It, it has no clue and it doesn't care. It's just saying, look, of the group of cells you gave me, which column do you want me to give you some data back from? Well, in this case, the index, when I look at this, is going to be column one, column two. All right, I want that test number to come back, so I need index number two, comma. The last element it asks for here is, is it sorted? And this is an optional one, but I always say false, simply because I don't know if this data is going to be sorted or not. If I was dealing with a lot of data all the time and, and I had a bit more control over it, again, maybe this is coming in from a form, so new data is being added constantly, um, that I can't control. I'm absolutely going to have to say false. From a programming perspective, from a spreadsheet functionality perspective, it will work better and faster if things are alphabetized and you can go ahead and say true but as a rule of thumb for the way i've worked with data i always say false and enter lo and behold it looked for benjamin Grimm, and it found benjamin Grimm in my list over here and it spit back the second column of data that it saw and that was the 68. so now i can't just grab this unfortunately and drag it over because you'll notice g2 well, if I drag sideways, will become H2. The A and E in my function here will become um, B and F. And I could put in some little um, absolute you know, formula references in there. I could throw in some dollar signs. So those are fixed and they won't move anymore. But the problem is because that number two is not actually a column reference, it's only a reference within the cells that I've selected, the two won't change and that's really the only thing i need to change right now because i need to look at the third column of data and then the fourth column of data and then the fifth column of data so what i'm going to do here is just simply copy this i'm going to use Control c i could also right click of course and say copy enter now i'm going to go to the next cell i'm just going to paste that in there so paste and of course i get a 68 again this time I'm going to come up into my formula bar here real quick. I'm going to change that 2 to a 3. Hit enter. And there's my 54, just like I see it over here next to Benjamin. So it's working out well. I'm going to click into the next one here, paste that. And again, instead of the 3, it's a 4. And of course, just like it shows us in our example over here, the next one is going to be a 5. Perfect. All right. So with that done, it means that I can hit Benjamin here and choose, say, the next student just to check. And my number's adjusted. Do it again. Let's go down the list. Numbers changed. Perfect. Well, of course, the last step in here, like everything else, is to make the chart. So it says select the name, titles, and marks from G1 to K2 and hit the chart button. So simple enough. I'm grabbing these guys down and over so that's the graph batch of cells that I want I can hit my chart button and I'm good to go so I could leave it like that if I just want to use the bar chart for this particular one that works fine click that the only thing that you'll probably want to change for something like this is the title you're not going to need Jubilee versus full name that doesn't make any sense at all and as I go to my drop down list here and change it to somebody else my data changes but the title doesn't realize that that's what's going to happen. The title's not actually referencing a cell. The title just gets kind of copy pasted from whatever it's on the cell when you initially hit make the chart. So for all of these guys, we're going to want to make some quick adjustments to that stuff. I'm going to click the three dots and edit this chart. I'm going to come to the actual title itself here. And I just need to come up with a better title. So it could be, you know, semester one math test marks or something along those lines, whatever it might be. I'll just keep it insanely simple right now and say test marks and leave it alone. Um, but in your own instances, for whatever purpose you might be creating these for, you'll definitely want to go in there and give it a slightly more generic name so that as you make these changes, it's not really hurting anything. Um, 
Now, what you'll also see here is, oh, Jubilee, see, I've got to change that to this little side part here. So any of these little labels, you want to make little tweaks to if that's the way you're running things. Um, and that's what you're setting up. And then whenever you change those, of course, if you needed to keep it, once again, I would simply download as a, a PNG file, probably as a picture file, and then use that and then make some other adjustments to my titles for the next one. But if I just quickly need to, maybe I'm writing report cards and I want to get a quick look at geez, how is Natasha doing this semester? Okay, pretty good, all right. So I can base my marks and judgment on that kind of chart real quick and then very quickly shoot to the next person, see how they're doing and move on. And I'm not constantly reading numbers, I'm getting that nice sort of visual look at how things have been going in their, in their different uh, tests and things. So that's how that's gonna work. You've got lots of options in there and I'll reset the file and post it for you guys up on um, our doc with all of our other tech talk stuff it's all going to be there and you can review it try it again and of course with version history you can always go with the, the file menu check the version history and just reset it right back to when you first got the file and any messing around or mistakes or things that you've done will all be taken out of there and gone and all the instructions will be sitting there so even if you're doing some of that and deleting instructions along the way you just hit revision history and get it right back to where it was and you won't have any problems with uh, getting all those instructions back. So have fun, play with your formulas and your charts and see what you can come up with.